Morning, how you doing? Hope you are all well. Just commuting today in the bike. That's me just coming into Dora. I'm on my way to Glasgow. So some of you may already know a volunteer for the Scottish Emergency Riders Volunteer Service. I'm a first responder. So I'm on, on I'm on call this weekend. So I thought I'm going to start commuting in on the bike. So stick around and I'll let you get a wee insight to what I do. So if you're new to the channel, check out my other videos. If you like what you see, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you know when I'm uploading. And to my current subscribers, thanks for your continued support. So as I said, don't know what this dude's all about. Stay tuned. And I'll let you see what I do. The Scottish Emergency Rider Volunteer Service. It's a charity. Purely no, it's purely run on funding. And as you'll know in the current crisis, we do a lot of events to raise money for it. And as you'll know, they'll all be cancelled. So it's challenging times for the charity that gets funding. Work in partnership with NHS. So we're a rapid response medical transport. So I'll put a link in the description. You can go and have a look at it. But it solely relies on raising funds. So a lot of the smaller charities go overlooked. For the past couple of weeks I've run a, a donation link on my channel. For anybody who can spare a couple of quid to donate, keep the service going. So the vehicles we use are bikes and cars. Fully marked up. And it's based in the Queen Elizabeth in Glasgow and covers the greater Glasgow and Clyde area mainly. But we do do we do go further afield. I mean, we have had jobs done in Newcastle in the past. And it's quite common for us to go to Edinburgh, Aberdeen. So it's not just covering Glasgow, it's covering, you could say, the whole of the UK if we're required. So I'll catch back up with you when I'm just turning in to the hospital. That's me just coming off the M8. So I started doing this just over a year ago. Never thought this day would come. With all the training and everything else would come into play. I've been putting the majority of my time into this. 
which I really enjoy. So that's me coming up to Queen Elizabeth University of Oslo. Fairly recent new building. Now she's there. So you never know what your day is going to be like. There are days where you just don't stop all day. And there's other days it's a wee bit easier, quieter. Couple of bikes and a couple of cars here at the moment. So my favourite bikes, obviously the 1200 RT Honda Crosser. And you've got an i3, and we've got a Series 2. There's also a Kawasaki 1400 GTR. We've got a couple of Range Rovers. That's one of them. There's another two. Right, so I'll catch up with you once my shift's over. Well, that's me. Shift finished. Just going to start making my way back. Right, so I've got about couple of miles where the road's kind of quiet, speed limit's low, so should be able to tell you a wee bit more about it. So basically, Scott Serves, as it's called, is a rapid response medical transport. So if you dialed 999, I'm not a paramedic, I wouldn't be coming to your door, we transport the medical equipment that's required. So if a patient comes in in the helicopter, say, and it's a trauma kit for A&E for theatres, where they're going to obviously go to theatre, and it's a particular bit of equipment they don't have, then we would be dispatched to get that. And depending what that was and how quick they needed it would depend on the response. That's the easiest way of putting it. But they can cover the other aspects as well with the bloods, theatre equipment, neonatal equipment, pediatric equipment. We do feeds for newborns. And there's other bits and bobs, and the burning question that everybody's going to ask is, do we transport the coronavirus? Which we do, uh, when required, and when asked to, and we take that to virology. Uh, so we'll pick it up from where it needs to be picked up, and it'll be taken there to be tested. So see, I joined a year ago, just over a year ago, and... There is a lot of training involved. Well, you've got car training, you've got bike training. I can do both. So you spend some time with a training officer and other training events. After a certain amount of time, you'll obviously pass that or require additional training. And then you can be single crewed from there on in. Uh, jobs come over the radio, come to our radios, it's a system they use and you accept the job, tells you what the job is, where you're going, grades the job, how quick it's required and basically you start your day, you sign out your vehicle. Because of the jobs I was doing today, it was the i3, which is the electric BMW which I enjoy using, to be fair. So 
So you sign off your vehicle, sign out your vehicle, you do all your vehicle checks obviously, all the stuff you would expect. And then basically that's your home for the day, that's where you work from, the jobs come through, the radio, you accept the jobs, get radio communications with any additional information that's required, if there is any. You would go to pick up what you're picking up, and you check in, there's a check in process throughout the whole, from start to finish, and then at the end of that job, you'll then clear the scene, and you become available for the next job. If it's a busy day, the, the jobs are already queued for you, and that's basically where it is. I mean, when you're getting all the training and everything that's required to carry out the role. When I started that a year ago, I never once thought we'd get to a day where, obviously, what's happened with the current circumstances. And you're glad you got the training, put it that way. Because it prepares you for everything you'd need to do, day to day. So as I said, I've been furloughed with my current employer, so I've been able to put more time into it. Which is the plan during the pandemic, while we're locked in. So only difference was that I'm now going to take the bike in with me. That'll give me a wee bit of bike time. Might get an interesting video out here, I don't know. We'll just need to wait and see. And I'll try and cover off some other topics while I'm doing it. So in the description I'll put a link to my current appeal, which is for an AED, or DFib, as other people might know them as. I started the appeal a couple of months ago, but I haven't really, I don't think I've kind of promoted it enough, so hence why it's coming onto my channel. So I'll catch back up with you after this wee bit more way done. So that's me back after more weight. So I'll give you a description of what it is, how we go about it. As I said, it's fully marked up vehicles. There is a lot of training involved in it, in the actual role. So it gives you a kind of insight into what I'm doing during lockdown. But if you have any questions, stick them in the comments, I'll do my best to answer them. Obviously the video is just a brief introduction into it, if I can get more done I will. Right, so any questions, stick them in the comments. If you're new to the channel, check out my other videos. If you like what you see, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you know when I'm uploading. I feel as if I'm shouting. And don't forget to hit the bell. That was me shouting. And if you're a current subscriber, thanks for your continued support. It's very much appreciated. So I'll try and do different topics going forward, when I'm riding the bike in on the way home, catch anything interesting, keep the cameras running obviously, if I can catch anything interesting happening, then I'll certainly share it with you. Interesting things like this. Well, if they two plonkers crash and they think I'm stopping for them. Nah, to be honest, I probably would. I'll put a link to my appeal in the description. 
if you click on that link even if you, you you're not able to donate it will tell you more about what we do and maybe answer some questions but until the next time cheers